Hello, math learners! Our lesson for today is about graphing polynomial functions. Let us have examples. You are asked to graph each polynomial function. Here are the steps in graphing polynomial functions. First, you have to describe the behavior of the graph. Determine the upper and the lower bound of zeros. Construct the table of values. Identify the zeros and y-intercept of the polynomial function. Determine the number of turning points. And you have to sketch the graph. Graph. The polynomial function g of x is equal to x raised to 4 minus 5 x squared plus 4. Step 1, you have to describe the behavior of the graph. So the polynomial function is of the fourth degree, which is even. And its leading coefficient is positive. Then the extreme left part of the graph is decreasing and the extreme right part is increasing. For step 2, determine the upper and the lower bounds of zeros of the given function. So for the upper bound, we have c is equal to 3. Then identify the coefficients of the given function. Kindly check first the exponents. We have 4. So we have a missing term with exponent 3. Then followed by 2. And we do not have a term with exponent 1 here, then we have 4 as the constant. So all you have to do is to replace zeros for the missing terms. So we have 1, 0, negative 5, 0, and 4. And C is positive 3. Then using the synthetic division, bring down 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Then combine 0 and 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And combine negative 5 and 9 is positive 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And 0 plus 12 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. 4 plus 36 is 40. So 5 is the smallest integral upper bound because the coefficients are positive. Next for the lower bound, c is negative 3. So, identifying the coefficients of the function. So, again, we have 1, 0, negative 5, 0, 4. And for the value of c now is negative 3. Using synthetic division, bring down 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 combined. It's negative 3. Times negative 3, it's positive 9. Combined, it's positive 4. 4 times negative 3, it's negative 12. And combined, 0 and negative 12 is negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 3, it's positive 36. Combined, 4 and 36, it's 40. And it gives us alternating signs. Therefore, Negative 3 is the largest integral lower bound. Then, construct the table of values of the given function. So, these are the values of x and the corresponding values of f of x or y. So, starting with negative 3 as the lower bound, going to positive 3 as the upper bound, including the zeros of the function, as well as the y-intercept and the turning points. So, I'll just give one solution at x is equal to negative 3. Then, substitute negative 3 to the given function. So, change x to negative 3. Here, negative 3. And then, you copy 4. Then, simplify. This is 81 minus 45 plus 4. So, the result is 40. That is why the result here is 40. For step 4, identify the zeros and the intercept of the polynomial function. 
the zeros are negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. And you can take this from the table of values. They are also called the x-intercepts. And the y-intercept is 4 with coordinate 0 and 4. Or simply the value of the constant. For step 5, determine the number of turning points. Since it is in the 4th degree, thus that is 4 minus 1 is 3. So the number of turning points is 3. The first turning point. The points with the same y coordinates are negative 2, 0, and negative 1, 0. So to find the x coordinate of the turning point, we use this formula. And substitute negative 2 to x sub 1, negative 1 to x sub 2. Over 2, the answer is negative 3 over 2 or negative 1.5. And then, using the given function, we have to substitute negative 1.5 to x. And the result is negative 2.19. Thus, the first turning point is at point with coordinates negative 1.5 and negative 2.19. The second turning point is at point with coordinate 0, 4. For the third turning point, the points with the same y coordinates are the points with coordinates 1, 0 and 2, 0. So, applying the formula, the result is 1.5. And for the y value of the turning point, we have negative 2.19. Thus, the third turning point is at point with coordinates 1.5 and negative 2.19. Then, let us sketch the graph of the function now, which is g of x is equal to x to the exponent of 4 minus 5 x squared plus 4. So the behavior of the graph again is extreme left part of the graph is decreasing and the extreme right part is increasing. The upper bound is 3 and the lower bound is negative 3. Then we have the table of values. Starting negative 3 as the lower bound, going to positive 3 as the upper bound. The zeros are negative 2, it's here, negative 1, 1, and 2. And the y-intercept is 4. The number of turning points is 3. And then, let us sketch the graph. Let us plot the points now in the Cartesian plane. So, we have the first point with negative 340, then negative 2,0, negative 1.5, negative 219, negative 1,0, 0, 0 4, 1, 0, 1 1.5, negative 2.19, 2, 0, and 340. And then, connect with a smooth curve. And, do not forget to place arrowheads here, here, y for the y-axis, x for the x-axis, and the complete coordinates for the points. So, if the graph is like this, the behavior extreme left part of the graph is decreasing and the extreme right part is increasing. Let us have example number 2. Graph g of x is equal to negative x raised to 4 plus 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 16x. Step 1, you have to describe the behavior of the graph. The polynomial function is of the fourth degree, which is even, and its leading coefficient is negative. Then, the extreme left part of the graph is increasing, and the extreme right part is decreasing. Let us determine the upper and the lower bounds of zeros of the given function. The upper bound, we have c is equal to 5. Then, let us identify the numerical coefficients of the given function. We have negative 1, positive 4, positive 4, negative 16. Then, 0 to replace the missing constant. And c is positive 5. 
using the synthetic division, we bring down negative 1. So, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5 combined is negative 1. Negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5. The result is negative 1. Negative 1 times 5 and negative 21. Negative 21 times 5 is negative 105. And the result is negative 105. Therefore, 5 is the smallest integral upper bound. And they're all negative since the leading coefficient contains a negative sign since the leading coefficient is a negative number let us have the lower bound c is equal to negative 3 then identifying the numerical coefficients we have negative 1 positive 4 4 negative 16 0 and the value of c is negative 3 then applying synthetic division bring down and negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3 combined 7. 7 times negative 3 is negative 21 combined it's negative 17. And negative 17 times negative 3 is positive 51 combined it's 35. 35 times negative 3 is negative 105. And the result is negative 105. And... Negative 3 is the largest integral lower bound. And we have alternating signs. By this time, it started with negative 1, then positive, negative, positive, negative. Then we have to construct the table of values of the given function. So, we have the values of x here. Starting negative 3 as the lower bound, going to 5 as the upper bound. And these are the values of f of x or the y values. So again, I will give you only one example at x is equal to positive 3. Let's try to find out if the result is 15. So using the given function, let us substitute 3 to x here, 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 and here. So we have negative 81, 108 here. 36 for 4 times 3 squared and negative 48 for 16 times 3. And the result is 15. So that is why we have 15 here. Then we have to identify the zeros and the y-intercept of the polynomial functions. The zeros are negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. You can find this in the table of values. And there are also the x-intercepts and y-intercept is equal to 0 with coordinates 0, 0. Then we have to determine the number of turning points. Since the polynomial is in the fourth degree, thus the number of turning points is 4 minus 1 or simply 3. Then we have to sketch. So again, we have to take the behavior of the graph, which is extreme left part of the graph is increasing and the extreme right part is decreasing. Then the upper bound is 5, the lower bound is negative 3. The table of values, which will include the lower bound and the upper bound, plus the zeros, which are negative 2, 0, 2, and positive 4, with the y-intercept here. And the number of turning points, we have 3 since the degree is 4. And by this time, we have to sketch the graph. Plot the points in the Cartesian plane now. Starting negative 3 with negative 105, negative 2, 0, negative 115, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 9, 2, 0, 3, 15, 4, 0 and then connect with a smooth curve. So, again, you have to indicate the arrowheads. This point contains the lower bound. This point contains the upper bound. This is the turning point. Another turning point. Another turning point. So, there are three turning points. We have the first zero, the second zero, the third zero, and the fourth zero. So all in all, there are four zeros of the function. And the graph 
crosses the x axis four times with these points here do you have questions if there is none then see you next time